So I've opened up the top of this as a Singer Merit 4552 model. And because I wanted to do maintenance on it, I got this sewing machine for $7.99. And you did not mishear me. $7.99 on shopgoodwill.com. Um, you can find some great vintage machines through there. A lot of people, you know, say they're cheap, that they're... They're not all that, but you know what? I've never gotten a bad one from Goodwill yet. They do have to test these electronic things. And I'm just hand turning this so you can kind of see what moves around in there. So this is your main shaft. This is the main gear, sometimes referred to as the worm gear. I don't know why they call it a worm gear. But under this gear is another one that it comes into contact with to turn your stitch dial to whatever stitch you have it set to. So when I first get a machine, I open it up, I take the top off, and then I proceed to go and vacuum out, and blow out any dust bunnies, because you'd be amazed how much dust collects inside the workings of this, and even um, over here towards the, uh, the light uh, fixture. So here are the points that you want to pay attention to. Now this... I don't know what kind of gear grease this is that they put on. This makes the different design stitches. So until I test the design stitches, I won't know if I need to remove that old... I mean, because it's, it's literally gummy. It's, it's hard. I mean, it's like almost like bad gum. So for right now, I'm going to leave it. If I find that the decorative designs are not working out, then I'll know that this is causing an issue and that'll be need to be cleaned out and then put this clear synthetic grease made by TriFlow. I swear by this product, by the way, I use it in all of my machines. And then what I will do is I will put that grease on here. I've already done that on the worm gear because it had all that thick stuff and it was making a really weird noise. Um, why there's grease here, I have no idea. I've never seen this on a, in a machine when I've opened it where gear grease is on something that's not a gear. That's where you would put a drop of oil, not gear grease. But for whatever reason, if, that, if I feel like that is inhibiting this machine in any way, I will take that off as well. I'll just take my little handy screwdriver, little one here, and I will peel that stuff right out of there because it's not a gear. And it's not plastic, it's metal on metal. And the rule of thumb is metal on metal, you use oil. Gears are typically, but because this is metal on plastic, you use the gear grease. Because oil will deteriorate the plastic in your vintage machine. I mean, look, look at this nasty stuff all up in here. So I'm just taking some of that excess out of there. Um, because that part there... This piece here is as it turns, it moves. So as this turns, this moves just a little bit. And then when you change to different stitches, it moves a little bit. But it's not like a moving gear, so I don't know why they put gear grease on that, to tell you the truth. Now this little piece here, if you, as you see it move, this is the stitch selector. I'm turning the stitch selector. And it has a little green sticker on the front. Pops through the windows of the top. And the top looks like this. This is the top of the machine. And that's where that little green dot shows up so that you know what stitch you're supposed to be stitching. And I will demonstrate those stitches in another video. So the Singer Merit 4552, it had a lot of, I call them dust bunnies, but mostly in the bottom part by where the bobbin is. And the reason being that is when you're sewing, little fibers break off of what you're sewing as you sew and they will tend to collect in your bobbin casing area. That is one of the places you want to check first. Um, after you go through the top, make sure there's no nothing amiss in here. This is the... Um, stitch width selector and that's when that moves for the stitch width so it really doesn't need grease it really just needs a and the only place it really needs oil is is here 
because this is a metal on metal moving part. And when you go like this, so that moves a little bit. So a little, little drop grease wouldn't hurt there. And here, anything I call like an elbow where it's metal on metal. You got some metal on metal here, which you would want to put in literally just one drop. If you over oil a machine, it won't run properly. And you don't want to over oil it. So you just put it right there by that little, where the metal meets metal, basically. And so as it goes to change gears and whatnot, and I just had two spots I missed. Okay, then it will run a lot smoother. Um, I can actually turn this on with the top off and let you hear this machine. And you can watch it at the same time. It runs great. It has a little whining noise which is coming from here from this uh, hand wheel gear and because there's a plastic gear here connected to the metal I did put a little bit of grease in there it's just got to work its way in there to take care of that noise um, that noise will go away over you know sew sewing with it a few times but other than that because it had they had put you can see the old grease here. I hadn't got all of it out. And that's another reason why it would make a funny noise. Because you got old grease and new grease. So it's just a spot that I missed. But it's hard to see in there. I mean, I could t literally take this out um, and go ahead and, you know, put grease inside that. But this is also your reverse. Or, I'm sorry, not your reverse. Your... Um, Bob and winder release. You, know, you push it in. I love these kind because you just push it in with your finger, push it back, and that's all you need to wind a bobbin. So that's this part of it. And there are three reasons why a needle will, well, let's say, if I've counted them up, it's at least three reasons why your thread will break. Your thread will break if you have a crooked needle in your machine. If the needle has any kind of slight bend in it. First thing you do if you're having trouble with making stitches or your thread keeps breaking, change out your needle. I changed out the needle on this just because it didn't have a needle when I got it. It also didn't have a uh, guide wire for the, the uh, thread, a needle guide wire for uh, right around the needle so I actually had an extra one in my uh, stash of different sewing machine parts so I installed it and it works great. Um, this machine the 4552 is called a slant machine. The reason why it's a slant machine is because of how the head of it and the mechanism for where the needle goes in is at a slight slant. It's not straight up and down. Most machines are straight up and down. This one comes at a slight slant. So it's not it's not a low shank machine, and it's not a super high, but it is a high shank machine. And you're probably wondering, what the heck does a high, does high shank mean? High shank is the distance from the bottom of the post that your, your pressure foot goes in. So this screws in. From here to the bed of your sewing machine, if it's over a half an inch, you have a high shank. That's simple. This is a slant machine. I don't have the manual for this yet. I have the parts list for it. But you can see that the foot itself is angled. It's slanted. It's got, a de it's not 45, it's about 30 something degrees off. So when this is installed, it's still at a slant. So this is straight up and down, but the leg of it is at a slant so whenever you have a machine and you don't know whether it's a slant machine or a high shank or a low shank you can break threads and needles left and right this machine i was not aware was a slant shank and i also was not aware of the size bobbin to take put in it the singer merit 
slant machine takes a 66, a class 66 bobbin. And a class 66 bobbin is smaller in height than your typical class 15s you can buy in the store all day long. And they come plastic or metal. And the plastic ones, this is a 66. No, 66, excuse me. This is a 15 uh, plastic one. And this is the 66. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the difference between them is just a hair. I mean, it's literally just a hair. This one's just a little bit lower than this one. I had this bobbin in this machine thinking it, you know, it fit in the bobbin holder. But... When I closed the lid and it closed, the bombing cover closed, as soon as I went to make a bunch of stitches, I busted a needle. And it happened twice. And I go, okay. I checked to make sure that my timing was right and that it was threaded properly, and it was. And then it dawned on me. I wonder what size bobbin this machine takes. And I looked it up. I looked up the parts for this model of machine online. Just looked up for a parts list and it said class 66 and it also told me it was a slant machine. So that little bit, that 16th of an inch or whatever it is, made a huge difference in this machine being able to sew without breaking a needle. So um, that's very important. If you don't have a manual with your machine or you get it secondhand, it does not have a bobbin in it, ask the person if they have a bobbin that was used in it because it'll save you a lot of headaches. And also ask if they know if it's a slant high shank, low shank, or super high shank. Kenmore made a super high shank, and I love them. Um, and I will show you that one uh, in another video. They do some really great stitching. But this one stitches right too. I've already tried it out even before I cleaned it out. And uh, so this is how you clean the top part. To clean the bottom part underneath the bobbin area, I'm going to pull out the extension here. I'm going to move this, this, uh, this light and whatnot backwards, back out of the way so I can move the machine to show you. The other area you want to pay attention to when you get a secondhand machine like this. I'm going to try to not knock over the camera. <laughs> All right, come over here, guys. Okay, so I'm going to move this down just a little bit. I'm going to turn that light off, but anyway. So this is where the light part is. There was some fuzz in here, but below where the bobbin is. Okay, here's the bobbin area. This slides out. Or slides back. It's easier if I had it stuck. There's where the bobbin goes. The bobbin in your uh, bobbin casing in here should be just below the top. If it comes straight with the top, it may be too big. You might <laughs> break a needle. So make sure you know what size goes with your machine. Then this part here, this part of the needle plate, that part, it just pops out. It just pops out of here. And this is kind of spring loaded, so it springs up. You put it back in, you slide it under and it snaps in place. All up under these brushes in here. Where's my little pointer? Where's my pointer? There it is. Da da da. All up under behind your presser foot and all in this area here. Down inside, I don't know if I can get you closer to see that or not. Let's see. Let's see. Directional wise. But in, around, behind your foot, all down in here, that collects lots of lint. Lots of lint and dust. So, you can vacuum this out, but if you think there might be more than meets the eye, there is a way to get into there from the bottom so you can really see what's going on. And I'm going to show you where that trap door is. Put 
this in here. Always make sure your needle's up so you don't break it trying to put your uh, face plates back in. That just snaps in. <clears throat> On the bottom of this machine, there is a screw right underneath. Look at all these threads around this thing. I don't know how I managed that one. Oh, I know. That's because I had it. I had it threaded. Huh. That's from the, from the spool of thread. There's one screw right here. One little screw. That's all it takes to get in there to see how your bobbin casing is doing. You also get to see a lot of other things. So unscrew the one screw. So I'm basically showing you where to find dust, debris, anything that might slow your machine down. Sometimes machines will make like a humming noise. And that means I gotta take this. Do I have to take that out? No, I don't think, don't think I do. They'll make a humming noise that it's because all those pieces of lint or thread are getting caught up in the mechanism. So you take that off and now you can see the bottom of your bobbin racing area. So when the handbell turns, this is the gear that goes to your bobbin racing area. You want to make sure that's got some good grease on it. Okay. Um, just a drop of oil here. And there's another gear here, which I don't know if y'all can see it. What the way this light is. It's hard to tell. But there's a big gear here. There's another gear that it butts up against. And you want to make sure that's grease good. I opened this up and there was literally a big fuzzball in here. I probably still have it on the floor somewhere. Because <laughs> I haven't swept in here yet. But that's where you find it. And once you've done that, you just close it back up. And screw that back in and you're ready to go. Except for putting the top back on. I have to put the top back on. So it just screws it back in. Now, if you wanted to see this section of the bottom, there is two things to take out. There's a screw that goes here, and then there's this little guy, which is a bolt. I have a bolt, and I have somewhere. I have a set of what's called sewing machine wrenches. And this is a tiny little thing. So to get this out, you can go like that, but the way I got it off was I just put this kind of at an angle and loosened it out. Just like that. After it's so loose, then you can just kind of hand or finger take it off. Like that. I think I already took the other screw. No, I didn't. It's right over there. It has this screw. I mean, this bolt. Taking that out. Ta da There's that bolt. And you'll see, you'll see, oh, this is loose. There's one screw right here. So it's a screw to bolt, and you can get, take this whole bottom off. This is one of the easiest ones to get to everything in it that, I, that, I, that I've seen. I've had some other models um, that were the same way. You know, some of them only had one screw in the middle, and boom, you could get in there. So you take that out. Now you can see where your motor is. You can see where one of your belts is, and here's where the other belt is here. This one may need a new belt. I'm not sure. So, I mean, it's good and tight, so I don't see any problem with that. This one looks brand new, that belt. So, this is your motor belt, and this is your uh, shaft belt. So, Anywhere where the metal rubs metal, I have put a drop of oil. I don't think I missed anything except for where the fan is. Now that sound I keep hearing might be the fan rubbing. So I'm going to put a drop of oil just behind the fan so it's not getting, you know, resistance. And I think that should do it. I like to hand turn things just to kind of see what goes where, how it's moving, and wherever there's metal on metal, 
That's where a little drop of oil goes. I'm not putting anything on that gear. Don't put any gear grease on where your belt is because then you get grease on the belt and then it slips. It will not work if you have grease on your belt. Then anything that might be making that noise which is going to be some elbow joint or something somewhere that has not been lubricated. And I've got the gears already done. So that should take, I mean, we'll find out. I like to let my machine sit for several hours before I actually test run it after doing the oiling. And that is the best way for the fact that you got to let it kind of like marinate, as, we, as I say. I say marinate, even though it's not cooking. So I'm going to put that screw back in there. Put that little bolt back there. There was a washer there. It didn't come off last time. This time it, it popped up. And you know it was there because it's black on black. You can't really see it. So I finger toed it so far. And then I'll use the wrench. You can get your hands on the little mini wrench set there. Most of your pieces in a sewing machine that would require this kind of tool are either H or 10 millimeters. Yeah. Yeah, it's millimeters. So, nice. Not too tight because the plastic will crack. And now I can put this baby back up right side up. And to put the top on, it's kind of tricky because of the, um, where, I'm going to take this thread off of here because it keeps getting in my way. Yeah. All right, it's all on the floor. I'm trying to get it out of the thread guide. There we go. So with this one, the key to it, putting it back on is, and taking it off is make sure that this lever that goes to the stitch width is all the way to the right and you kind of angle it to put it back on. This piece around the light, if you need to get in there, it's got one screw on the outside like most of them. You do want to put one drop on the bar that goes up and down for the needle. So let's see how good I'm at, I am at getting this back on here because it's, it's ready to be tested. So, there it all. Line that up. And let's see. Where you at, buddy? I'm trying to see where the uh, lever is while I'm trying to do this. If you want to take your time, because you don't want to break anything, and I certainly don't want to break anything on this machine. Because it's a great machine. Um, Especially for eight dollars. Okay, so there's that. Now let's see. That's kind of a that's one of these wiggle things. Let's put it this way. Let's see if it'll behave better. Putting it back on. I can't remember which way I did it. I initially took it off. I had it all the way to the right. So that that, that piece is going on. It's this one with the Stitch witch, stitch witch that wants to fuss. So let's try this one. All right. I'm feeling where it is. And then it. I had one where you had to like really wiggle it to get it to get in the little groove. <laughs> I definitely don't want to break my stitch with um, bore. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to line it up and then tilt it back. Did that do it? Nope. i got to try it again. Try to line it up. Actually, I'm going to put it in the middle. Let's see. If it's going to go. Okay, that's there. Because that's at the point that it will go over. Okay, so let's try it. Okay. 
That's a trial and error. Trust me. Sometimes it is. It was easy to get off. Getting it back on is another story. Come on now. Because you can't come back to forward because that's not how it came off. So, I know there's a trick to this. I just don't know what it is. Unless... Well, now you popped out. Uh huh. Yeah, you're being rude. Hot. Let's see. Can I? Maybe. If that won't do it. It's got to be under it. It's terrible when you can't see. What are you doing? Try this one. Okay, so it's you have to have it this way towards that bolt there, and then you kind of squeeze it on there. <laughs> Finally got it on there. So in here, there's only one, two, three screws to go on the top, and those guys. These big long ones. One, two. Now, what's interesting about this, too, is in order to get this to pull off, you also got to take these two little screws out of here from the handle. Now, I thought that was kind of weird, but that's how Sears, Sears, Singer is tricky. They will hide a screw on you. Just so that you have to try to figure out where it's at to get it apart. That's, that's been every single machine I've ever taken apart. I'll get it to where I think I've got all the screws and then I'll try to yank it off and it won't come. And then I find little screws like this hidden up under the handle that are holding that top in place. You can believe that. So, get in there. I try to magnetize my uh, the ends of my um, screwdrivers because it's easier to hold on to them or keep them in place when you're screwing them in. Like this. Like that. I got a long ways to go down there. And you don't want to over tighten them. These machines, granted, are predominantly metal at this point. Um, the facings, the knobs, and the uh, attachment for the for the uh, extended bed almost always are plastic um, with this particular uh, make of machine. A lot of people like the upright post for putting the spool of thread. This one comes with an extra hole, so you can put that in there. If you don't want to use that one, or if you want to stitch with two threads, this also does great with a double needle. That's why I like this. It's a heavy duty. It will do double stitching of that gold thread, two lines of stitching for your jeans very easily. So let's see if that made any difference on it. Still a little squeal, but I'm not going to be sewing that fast. And little by little, it's going, it's going away a little bit, little by little. And then all we got to do is replace the cover that went to the stitch width button. Remember, these buttons that covers are always with the groove on top. It goes right in there. And I can change my stitches. Hopefully this has been helpful for everyone, and this is how you take apart and put back together and look for areas to oil on a stitch, um, or actually a Singer Merit uh, 4552 model.